Stickers might be the worst part of any LEGO set, but that doesn't mean that they're all bad. Today, we'll be looking at LEGO's weirdest, wildest, and rarest stickers. But I want to start today with the sticker that actually inspired this whole video. LEGO is perhaps one of the most inclusive and family-friendly companies out there, and they take great steps to make sure that everyone playing with anything LEGO feels welcome and respected, which is why this product rubbed so many people the wrong way when it was released. LEGO does make a lot of products that aren't just bricks, and one such item was this sheet of 21 stickers released in 2008 as a part of the city construction sub-theme. At first glance, it seems like a perfectly fine product. We've got a few LEGO machines, some minifigures getting to work, and even a few little jokes. But wait, what's that? Oh, oh no. While a few of these stickers make jokes, there's nothing wrong with that, but one of these crosses the line of good taste to the point where several people were offended. The sticker in question is the one to the right, with a construction worker. It seems that LEGO may have been trying a little bit too hard to make this particular sticker a little too realistic. Yep, this little plastic worker is calling out, hey babe, to some unseen lady minifigure. These kinds of cat calls may be long-standing and outdated stereotypes of construction workers, but I've got to wonder why LEGO felt the need to include it in this sticker set. I mean, these sticker sheets are definitely not being targeted towards adults. And while it may seem like a small issue, it was enough to cause a small internet uproar with LEGO eventually weighing in with an official statement claiming that, quote, LEGO typically uses humor to communicate the LEGO experience and that, quote, the product was no longer available and that LEGO would not approve of such a product again. So how did this even happen to begin with? Well, I did some digging, and it seems that LEGO had outsourced the stickers to a company called Creative Imagination, and they were the ones who actually designed them. As of the time of the internet drama in 2013, the stickers had actually already been discontinued in 2010, and Creative Imagination even stopped operations in December of 2012. Clearly the product wasn't even a success to begin with, and it's safe to say that this mistake likely won't ever happen again. One thing worth mentioning here though is just how rare something like this is. I don't mean the sticker sheet itself, since these are still floating around online for about 10 US dollars right now, but I mean the kind of misstep from LEGO. Out of literally thousands of unique sets and stickers that LEGO has put out over the last 50 plus years, this is the only one I could find that people were calling offensive. Most of the complaints that people have about LEGO stickers are just how hard they can be to place properly, and they're just annoying. One of the most difficult to place stickers that I've ever seen can be found in the Hogwarts Fluffy Encounter set. Specifically specifically this stickler in the castle spire. While this sticker itself is perfectly fine, the fact that you need to place it inside of the rounded cone presents a real challenge for even the most seasoned builders. Many of the techniques used to get a smooth sticker placement are much harder on a curved piece, and being on the inside just adds another level of difficulty. What's even worse is that these stickers are largely transparent, and while that's good for making sure that you get the perfect color, it tends to hold fingerprints and may trap dust. Getting this sticker placed perfectly might take several tries, and by then, your once transparent sticker will be covered in your own fingerprints. Now, as annoying as that sticker might be, it was in a fairly small and inexpensive set. But even some of LEGO's flagship products have been hampered by bad stickers. To see what I mean, let's take a look at a few of the Star Wars UCS ships. First off, it's the UCS A-Wing. This 1,600-piece set only included a few stickers that largely added to the final build in a really nice way. But there's one section that was a true nightmare. Take a look at page 239 of the instructions for some genuine horror. Yep, this step calls for three stickers to be placed on this curved cockpit piece. This is very tricky even on a flat tile, but getting three thin lines to line up perfectly on this piece requires some serious Jedi focus. Unlike the Harry Potter set though, these stickers aren't hidden inside, they're front and center, meaning that any mistake will be visible forever. That's a lot of pressure. Hope you don't mess up. Now, this isn't the only UCS ship to get this treatment either. In fact, the red 5X-Wing Starfighter has an even trickier set of stickers to place. Take a look at this sticker sheet for the cockpit. We've got four stickers that all need to be placed perfectly not to overlap with each other. At least the places for them are flat, but it's a real challenge either way. 
Thankfully, when LEGO released an updated UCS X-Wing in 2023, they used the same cockpit piece, but with the design printed on. Maybe there's a new hope for a world without stickers after all. While it's easy to make fun of LEGO stickers, they aren't all bad. In fact, there have been some truly amazing adhesive art over the years in sets. Overall, some of the very best LEGO stickers have come as references and Easter eggs in many of LEGO's licensed sets. The LEGO Rivendell set is a thing of absolute beauty, and the amount of detail that the designers crammed in here would make Tolkien proud. While most of the finer work in this set is brick built, the box did include two sticker sheets containing 13 decals. While some of these are a little questionable, notably the Mithril shirt, the majority of these are absolutely amazing. We've got maps straight out of the book, paintings of the elves crossing the sea to Middle-earth, and even a few Lego-fied versions of some of the story's most important moments, like the forging of the One Ring itself. Honestly, I love these stickers so much that I would buy these sheets as a standalone product just to put them on my laptop. And while Lego simply has just too many amazing stickers in many different sets to list them all, there are a few that I love so much that I should point out. In no particular order, we've got Frostilicus from the Simpsons Quickie Mart set. This build is full of great references references, and almost every sticker in this set is some sort of inside joke for serious fans. If you can think of a funny or clever LEGO sticker, let me know in the comments. Now, moving on, this is a double-sided Palpatine sticker from the Imperial Star Destroyer set. Now, this effect is created using two stickers that are placed on opposite sides of a transparent brick to create a distinctive hologram illusion. This is such a cool effect, and I'd love to see more examples of this level of creativity in LEGO decals. But going back to LEGO Harry Potter, this stained glass mermaid from the Hogwarts Clock Tower set is another incredible addition that might just not be possible with traditionally printed pieces. One LEGO theme where many fans constantly question why is this a sticker is the Speed Champions line. These little cars are generally great, and the series is incredibly popular, but it doesn't change the fact that these sets kind of have too many stickers. I mean, seriously, check out step 53 of the Mercedes-AMG build. It calls for 10 stickers at once. Yuck. However, LEGO seems to be actively working on this, with the Speed Champions design lead Chris Stamp stating that the theme's focus for 2022 was on headlights, starting with brand new printed elements. The team typically recreated headlights using brick-built solutions, or more commonly, stickers across tiles. But given how many other stickers these sets usually involve, that was apparently one step too far for the fan community. Chris was quoted in a recent interview saying that he understands the desire for fewer stickers in these sets. He said that, quote, We know that six stickers for a Toyota headlight is probably asking a little bit too much. I personally wanted eight stickers, but, you know, printed headlights is a big thing for us in Speed Champions. I know it's not a big thing in LEGO in general, but for us, it's a big thing. So, I mean, this just raises the question, why are some pieces printed while others are stickers? LEGO doesn't just make decisions randomly, and there has to be a good reason. Well, this got me digging, and it turns out that there, in fact, is a process that LEGO uses to decide if a piece will be printed or used as a decal. At an event in 2022, Sven Franick, the lead designer on the Back to the Future Time Machine set, gave some really great insight into LEGO's decision-making process. This set features 14 stickers of its own and only a single printed piece, which is a 1x2 slope with the logo for DMC, or DeLorean Motor Company, printed on it. Why was this the only piece to get a print? Well, Sven explained that, quote, We try to prioritize prints for smaller parts, or anything where it's easy to make a mistake, or if it's a rounded piece. If we can, we prioritize printed pieces. Also, that's kind of the face of the vehicle, and when you don't have that logo, it seems to lose a lot. But sometimes we actually prefer stickers. Sometimes it's due to margins. With printing, you have certain limitations and margins, so you actually end up with a better result if you apply a sticker. So yeah, it seems like LEGO is making a conscious effort to move away from stickers as much as possible, but I really can't imagine that we'll ever see a day without them. I mean, have you seen the sets with the most stickers? They're ridiculous. Click here to see them, and subscribe so you don't miss my next LEGO video.